Today is the 1st of March and I have just finished my first book of the month which I started yesterday and really enjoyed. Yesterday was very snowy and cold, very wintry, so I decided to use that perfect setting for picking up a cozy book. The Blue Castle by Ellen Montgomery, which was such a pleasant read. I gave it four and a half stars. It is an endearing story about a 29 year old woman who is an old maid. She has no man in her life, she hates her life, she hates her family, she feels like she shouldn't be on this earth. That's the starting point of this book and then it moves on from there with with quite a dramatic twist to it which I really appreciated. So yeah, I love this one a lot. Four and a half stars. It was a great start to the month and now I'm eager to pick up yet another book because this weather, which is very freezing, is perfect for reading. And Zeus says hi as usual. <laughs> what I look like when I come home from work. But I did come home to a beautiful package. Oh, look at this. I like this. And also I need to discuss this book. I mean this book. This is funny because last week I decided to unhaul this book even though I hadn't read it because I thought I had lost interest in it and I didn't really feel for the story anymore. But on a whim I decided to pick it up anyway and I am so so glad I did because I think this is going to be one of my favorite books of 2018 now. Such a brilliant story, beautiful all the way through. It's got seahorses in it, it's got a main character called Ari who lives in a very brutal family with an alcoholic mother and an abusive father and she lives with her five sisters who all suffer from this condition and this childhood and it's just a beautiful impeccable story about the best main character that I have read about for a long time. I really, really wanted to meet Ari in person. I was just blown away, really blown away. So definitely a book I recommend and definitely a book I'm going to keep on to for many, many years. This book was very peculiar. This is The Sadness, The Particular Sadness of Lemon Cake by Amy Bender. And I've had my eyes on it for the past years, especially because of this delicious cover. Anyway, I found this book very peculiar and I'm still not sure I completely understand what it was really about. But it is about our main character Rose, who when she is 8 years old finds herself in the kitchen with her mother who bakes her a lemon cake. Rose eats the cake and from that cake she knows what her mother is feeling, the mother who actually baked the cake. Rose gradually realizes that this happens with all the food that she eats, that she can feel the feelings of the people who have cooked the food. That's very strange. The story becomes even more peculiar and I think I I think I understood what the overall message, message was, but I don't think it was a very clear or very, I don't know how to say it. It's a very peculiar story, basically, and I'm very puzzled. That's what I'm trying to say. But I did like the narration of an eight-year-old girl. The writing and the observations were quite childish, and I liked that. But I didn't really like that we actually follow her until she is in her 20s because I didn't understand quite why it had to take so long for the story to move forward. Anyway, I am very puzzled. This is one of those books that I don't really know what I think of but I did like it somewhat and I think I'm going to give it three stars. Right Zeus? I need to make myself some coffee and I also need to show you the most gorgeous gorgeous book I now own. This is the book. Can we just appreciate this impeccable cover? I just clicked on the most horrifying link that I could ever have clicked on. 
right before going to bed. I also just finished my first one star read of the year, which is not good. And I was pretty harsh in my Goodreads review. But basically, I was reading and finishing Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. So many people love it and that's perfectly fine with me. I see that it's a very fun and light read. But to me it wasn't that funny, it was more of a frustrating read with the worst message ever. I really didn't like it. Basically the message is that money can solve everything and even though you are a down-to-earth person, you will be turned into someone who loves money and who loves a sort of lifestyle with jet planes and mansions and just designer clothes and everything. But also, the, oh, there are so many things about this book, I really don't want to rant on for too long. It's just a silly story, I know it's supposed to be, but really it was too silly in my eyes and I really didn't like it. So, I'm now trying to put out that book from my head as well as that link, which I kind of want to see what it's about, but that first picture really got to me, so now I kind of feel scared to go to bed all alone in the dark. I need shoes for this. I have here Roses by Nila Meacham, which I have now finished and which was an okay book. If you can ignore all of the bad decisions of the characters, then it's a pretty decent read with a lot of intrigue and I was entertained, I definitely was, but those bad decisions really got to me in the end. And yeah, I gave this book three stars in total. So I was sitting in my office working, correcting papers, and then the doorbell rang and these arrived. I had to take a break. Mm. Ooh, this one is so exciting. I've been waiting for this. Wow, gorgeous color. Ooh! <laughs> There's nothing like the rush you get when you see a pretty book you've been waiting for. This is the book. This cover is one that I will definitely display on my shelves for years and years to come. Sears is staring at me, by the way. Third one looks like this. This is absolutely gorgeous. I really hope the story will be gorgeous as well. I'm sure it will. And then the last package is pretty tiny. Ooh. I did not realize this novel was this tiny. I didn't know that. I thought this would be a pretty huge and chunky novel, but no it isn't. I'm not complaining. Here we have it. Look at this. Ooh, that looks stunning. And that looks like a perfect reading day to me. I better get back to my papers now. I have rearranged my bookshelves a little bit so that they are more neat according to my eyes. But I haven't finished yet, so I'm playing around with it a little bit. But so far, this is what's happening. I have tried to collect all of my chunky, big paper bags on the same shelf so that they look quite similar and they are collected. And I want to do the same thing with the rest of my shelves so that all of my well, smaller paper bags are collected and all of my tall paper bags and everything. And it's kind of fun to play around with. But I'm not sure yet that this is the look I'm going for. I do think this looks pretty nice. Except from those Murakami books up there. It looks really good. Hi Zeus! So this is what I've been doing and I kind of want to play around with it a little bit more today. And there is Zeus, ready for the day. Hi Zeus! Hi! I am so, so happy. I need to show you something. I have bought myself more mugs, but I really wanted these and I just got them. So I want to show them to you. These are the excellent Virago classic mugs. So they are kind of literally inspired and they look absolutely stunning. This is the one based on excellent women by Barbara Pym. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, The Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter, and then we have Valley of the Dolls by Jacqueline Susan. I haven't read all of these books, but some of them I have. They look so stunning, these mugs. 
Good Behavior by Molly Keen, another one of my favorites. It's kind of it kind of reminds me of Alice in Wonderland with that rabbit. And then last but not least, we have The Talented Mr. Ripley by Patricia Highsmith. These marks are so gorgeous. I plan on displaying all of these on my bookshelves and then whenever I'm in the mood for a cozy read and a good cup of coffee to go with my book, I might just pick up one of these mugs. That's my plan and that's my excuse for buying even more mugs for myself. This is what the boxes look like. I have to keep on to them as well, so I might put them in the office. Zeus prefers the boxes as per usual. Right, Zeus? Ooh, dangerous lion, that's who he is. Here is Zeus, guarding my books. And can you see the new mugs up here in the upper corner? They look so stunning. I'm absolutely loving them. I think I might actually go read in my book now. And I think I want to drink my coffee from this Rebecca mug. Right, Zeus? Don't you think so? I'm getting ready to film a couple of videos, but before I do so, I have to praise this book, which I finished very recently. It is on writing a memoir of the craft by Stephen King. I am not the hugest Stephen King fan, as you might know. I love some of his books. I really, really don't like others of his books. But I was curious to read about his take on writing since he is the most or one of the most prolific I see it's one of the most prolific and popular horror authors out there. And this book blew me away. I loved it. I love how it was it was divided into three parts. The first part is about his childhood and how that formed him into a writer. The second part is an actual toolbox in which he gives you specific ways to write and things to avoid in order to write good fiction and then the last section is about an accident that he was in that nearly killed him all parts were fascinating in their own way i was so blown away i've always said i'm not a writer i'm a reader but this book almost pushed me to write my own book which i i'm not going to do but that's how good it was and needless to say i gave this one five stars I wonder where Zeus is. Hi, Zeus! You found a sunspot? Mmm, how nice. So I think I have decided to unfortunately give up on this book, which I've made it halfway through and the first part was enchanting. But it's one of those books that I find very repetitive in its format and the story is built up in the exact same way throughout and I'm not a huge fan of that. So I feel like I get the characters now. I get how they are mean and how they have their faults and also how they have their weaknesses. But I also get now how this story is going to continue and I'm not a fan of it. So I think I'm going to give it up. Basically, it's about the street. It's about a family living in one house in India and now Zeus is about to eat my camera. Zeus! I'll try not to get distracted by Zeus but it's a beautiful story if you really like if you like character driven books which I do but it's also about the Indian war, Indian revolution and so it's got history in it but as I said the format of this book bores me a lot and I just really don't have room in my reading life these days for a very repetitive chunky book. Zeus who is trying to get all of the attention as per usual. I seem to be reading a lot of amazing books these days including this one which took my heart away and ran. This is one of those books that I was so frustrated after having finished it because I didn't want for it to finish and I felt like I was missing something now not having this book anymore but basically this is a non-fiction book about a bookseller who gives us his diary over a year so it's basically about how it is to be a bookseller what frustrations come with that job even though that might be hard to imagine and I just well, in the beginning I had to get used to the negative tone of voice because this bookseller 
is quite cynical, I think. And I didn't really dig that, but I realized very quickly that it worked so well. It was still an enchanting read and I ended up really loving this tone of voice. So I was enchanted. This is one of the best books I've read so far this year. So yeah, needless to say, I gave it five stars. have slept until 7 today but then I woke up at 6 so I now have an extra hour to sit down with my book and read before I have to go to work by the way I'm going to Copenhagen for work today so that is great so last night in bed just before sleeping I finished The Accusation by Bandy which is a collection of short stories which have been written in North Korea transported out illegally and then published in our world. As you can imagine, this is fiction, but it's based on real life in North Korea, which is devastating, and it was very fascinating to read. I will say, though, that while reading it, I was thinking to myself, who am I to judge this piece of work? Because it is based on reality, and I cannot judge that this is such an important work, because it is based on reality. But I will say that some of the fiction, some of the stories were a little bit too heavy on the symbolism and the author likes to really clearly point out what the symbol behind it is and what he is trying to say, which I wasn't the hugest fan of, so I did judge it and give it four stars out of five. But if I had to judge it purely out of its importance and relevance, this book would have gotten five stars. I'm going to pick up my next book now and I think, well I know I'm going to pick up this one. Let's go see if my coffee is ready. Hi Zeus. Zeus says hi. He's having his breakfast. I've already had mine. I was hungry. Mm. Oh yeah. By the way, let me know if you get tired of watching me make my coffee which i do in every single vlog i think but it is part of my everyday life so why not mm, this is good mm, okay time to go reading my reading game has been on lately. I feel like I've read so many books in the past week. And yesterday I finished, well I started and I finished Tin Man, which I don't have too much to say about. I was a little bit underwhelmed by it. I believe it was because I had so high expectations for it. And I see a lot of people love this book because it's so beautiful. And I agree, it is, but I also found it very simple, very short and not too impactful, unfortunately, not to me at least. So I gave this one three stars, I did enjoy it and now I'm going to find out what to read next. I have no idea, let me just check my bookshelves because my coffee is brewing and I have to wait for that anyway. So a book I really have my eyes on is this one, The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna, which is also a very recent release. And I don't know, I've also been very curious to read this one, but it's a very huge book and I am trying to be careful with reading those huge books these days because I feel like they drag me down. I don't know what it is. Anyway, maybe just a very short book. Could be, I don't know, maybe this one? I have no idea. I just know that right now I want to go get my coffee and then hopefully figure out what to read. So yesterday I finished a book which I knew nothing about two weeks ago. I stumbled across it in the book I read last week, The Diary of a Bookseller, and I wanted to read it. So when I went to a bookstore last week, I found it and I bought it and I have now read it. It's a very petite book which I'm going to show you now, I just have to find it. So that's the reason why I was able to read it so fast, but it was a pleasant surprise. This is the book, Parara Maintains by Antonio Tabucci. 
and it's set in Lisbon in 1938. It's about this overweight journalist who encounters a very young boy and this young boy turns out to change his life's direction in a way that's very covered and that's very political and I loved it. I felt like this was beautifully crafted and it was a pleasant surprise. A very short read but it comes with a lot of layers and it basically deals with how our, how our identity shift even though we are older it can still change and I liked it so I understand why this is so popular it is actually a classic and I loved it I gave it four stars but I think it's one of those novels that I will think a lot about in the upcoming days and I might change my opinion for the better it is Friday afternoon my spring break has just started which is oh, the best feeling so I literally have the next week off from work in which I can spend time with my friends and family and also read a lot more than I can in the everyday life of my life. So I thought I would kick off my vacation with showing you what I'm currently reading, which is a book that I picked up this morning and that is What a Carve Up by Jonathan Co. I'm only a few pages in but I'm already enjoying it. This is about a dysfunctional family and I want to enjoy myself reading this over the next days. But first I need to go work out and then it's all about reading for the rest of the day. Hi <laughs> Zeus! I have finished my first book of my spring break and that is actually The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. I'm still currently reading Water Carver by Jonathan Co. I hope I will be able to finish that before this month ends. But now it's time to talk about this one which was such a beautiful but also devastating read. It's a very recent release and first of all this spine is to die for. Second of all the content of this book is just really worth your time. It's set in Alaska. It's about this family whose father is a Vietnam War veteran and he suffers from nightmares and an explosive temper. He decides to move his family of his wife and his daughter to Alaska. It makes you wonder why he decides to go to this place that feels like the end of the world since he's feeling the way he feels. But really this book is actually told from the daughter's perspective and it's a story that takes you on such a journey that it feels like quite a mouthful. I was a bit confused as to the direction this book was going. I felt like I knew the direction and the theme and then it went in another direction. So. That was a little bit puzzling but all in all really worth my time and that landscape of Alaska really makes me want to go there someday. So I gave this book 4 stars in total. It's still the same day, it's just a little bit later and I've changed my mind. I think I'm just going to end this vlog here even though I might be able to finish this before the month ends. I have about 160 pages left. But the old me, the old reading me would have tried to rush through it in order to finish it before the month ended so that I could include it in the reading block. But I don't want to do that. I don't feel like doing that. I just want to read it whenever I want to and enjoy it. So whether I finish it in March or not, it will not be included until my April reading block. And also I think this vlog is already turning way too long so as I said I'm going to finish it now. Thank you so much for sticking with me and following my reading month as per usual. I enjoy doing these and I hope you enjoy watching them. So thank you very much for that and until my next reading vlog, happy reading!